In this video, we're going to continue with our introduction of probability and specifically talk about conditional probabilities. We're going to do a few worked examples, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. So here's our equation for conditional probabilities. We read this as the probability of B given A is equal to the probability of A and B divided by the probability of A. In other words, we can read this as the probability of event B given some piece of information of event A is equal to the probability of event A and B occurring together. That's the joint probability divided by the probability of event A, which is the marginal probability. So when we look here at this equation, when we see this vertical line, we read this in statistics as given. So it's just a shorthanded way of, of saying given. So the probability of B given A and then what we note is that whatever is to the right of this vertical line, in this case, it's event A, will appear in our denominator of our conditional probability equation. So the probability of B given event A is equal to the joint probability of A and B occurring together divided by the marginal probability of event A. So let's go ahead and jump right into some worked examples here. So here is uh, the question, the following contingency table shows opinions about global warming. That is a non-issue versus serious concern among registered voters broken down by political party affiliation that is liberal, conservative, and independent. So before we even read the question, let's go ahead and just look at our contingency table here. So do we have a properly constructed contingency table? Well, we have two categorical variables, so that's good. We have opinion on global warming and we have political party affiliation so that's good if we look at does our some of our rows add up to our our total total right here our total total box so 500 plus 500 plus 1200 those add up to 1200 440 plus 760 the sum of our columns also adds up to 1200 so it would appear that we have a nicely constructed contingency table so let's go ahead and get into our question. So the question is asking us, what is the probability that a randomly selected registered voter who is conservative believes that global warming is a serious issue? Well, first of all, has our question given us any information? Well, yes. The question has said, who is conservative? So we know that the reg this registered voter is conservative. And what we're interested in is what is the probability that they believe that global warming is a serious issue? So we can write that here. Question A, we're going to write this as the probability of serious issue given conservative. And this is equal to the probability of serious issue and conservative. That's our joint probability divided by the probability of conservative. That's our marginal probability. So we don't have probabilities in our table, but we can get them fairly easily. So what is the joint probability of serious and, cons and conservative? Well, that's simply 210 divided by 1200. So we'll write this here as 210 divided by 1200. And then what is our marginal probability here divided by our marginal probability? Well, in this case, we're dealing with 500 divided by 1200 divided by 500 divided by 1200. Our 1200s cancel out here. And what we end up with is 210 divided by 500, which gives us a probability of 0 0.42. Okay, question B. What is the probability that a randomly selected registered voter is a conservative given that she or he believes global warming is a serious issue? So what piece of information are we given? Given, whoops. given that she or he believes global warming is a serious issue. And what are we interested in? Well, we're interested in the probability that they are conservative. So let's go here, question B. So we're interested in the probability 
conservative given serious issue which is equal to our joint probability so the probability of conservative and I'm just gonna say serious divided by the probability of a serious issue so we don't have these probabilities but we can get them from our table so our probability of conservative and serious concern well that's just 210 divided by 1200 so 210 divided by 1200 divided by our marginal probability and in this case our marginal probability is serious concern so 760 divided by 1200 which is just equal to whoops 210 divided by 760 which gives us a final answer of 0 0.2763 Okay, and question C, what is the probability of serious concern given liberal? So in this case, it's not a word, really a word comprehension question or reading comprehension question. They've given us it to us in the probabilistic notation. So probability of serious concern given liberal. So let's go ahead and write this. So probability of serious concern given liberal is equal to our joint probability so the probability of serious and liberal divided by the probability of liberal so let's just go up to our table here so the probability, our joint probability of serious concern in liberal is 440 divided by 1200. And while we're up here, we can just look at our marginal probability, which is 500 divided by 1200. So we get 440 divided by 1200 divided by 500 divided by 1200. Of course, this simplifies to be 440 divided by 500, which gives us a final answer of 0 0.88. Okay, let's move on to our next question here. So suppose an online, businesses, an online business organizes an email survey to find out if online shoppers are concerned about the security of business transactions on the web of 42... Of the 42 individuals who respond, 24 are concerned and 18 are not concerned. Eight of those concerned about security are male and six of those not concerned are also male. If a respondent is selected at random, find each of the condi following conditional probabilities. Okay, so let's look at this question. First, they ask us to construct a contingency table with the above information. So can we, while well, we're dealing with two categorical variables, we're dealing with um, sex, male or female, and we're dealing with their concern status about security, so they're either concerned or not secure, concerned, so we can construct our contingency table. So let's go ahead. We're going to have male, female, of course we have our total, and we're gonna have concerned, not concerned, and we'll have our total. We can draw our lines in here. There, so the beginning stages of our contingency table. We're told that there are 42 individuals who respond. So that means that our total responses is gonna be 42. We're told of the, 20, of the 42, 24 are concerned and 18 are not concerned. So 24 and 18. So 24 plus 18 is 42, so we're on track here. We're then told that 
eight of those concerned about security are male and six of those not concerned are male. So eight of those concerned are male, six of those who are not concerned are also male. So we can do the math here, eight plus six is 14. 42 minus 14 gives us 28. 18 minus six gives us 12. 24 minus eight gives us 16. 16 plus 12 is 28, 14 plus 28 is 42, 24 plus 18 is 42, 8 plus 16 is 24, 6 plus 12 is 18. So there we have our properly constructed contingency table. So let's go to question two. So what is the probability the respondent is male given the respondent is not concerned about security? Okay, so two, the probability that they are male given they are not concerned is equal to the joint probability that they are male and not concerned divided by the marginal probability that they are not concerned. So we can get this from our contingency table. So our joint probability that they are male and not concerned is simply six divided by 42. Divided by our marginal probability of not concerned, which is 18 divided by 42. We can simplify this six divided by 18 and we arrive here at our final answer of 0 0.33. Okay. Question three. What is the probability the respondent is not concerned about security given that the respondent is female? Okay, so three, the probability of not concerned given that they're female is equal to the probability of not concerned and female divided by the marginal probability that they are female. So our joint probability of not concerned and female is 12 divided by 42 and our marginal probability that they're female is 28 divided by 42. So 12 divided by 42, divided by 28, divided by 42, which is equal then to 12 divided by 28. And we arrive here at our answer, which is equal to 0 0.42. Eight, six. Okay, and then finally question four, what is the probability the respondent is female given that the respondent is concerned about security? Just draw that back in there. So what is the probability the respondent is female given the respondent is concerned about security? So question four, what is the probability that they are female given concerned, which is equal to the probability of female and concerned divided by our marginal probability that they're concerned, whoops. So let's go up here. So we get our joint probability that they're female and concerned, which is 16 divided by 42, divided by our marginal probability that they're concerned, which is 24 divided by 42, which is equal to 16 divided by 42, divided by 24 divided by 42, 
of course this simplifies to 16 divided by 24 which then equals 0 0.6666 final answer. I can probably clean that up equals 0 0.6666 final answer that's it for this video, but if you found that it helped to make statistics easy, consider showing your support by giving the video a like. And if you still need more help with statistics, then consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. I look forward to solving many more problems with you next time.